In those people having less experience in looking at thoracic radiographs, there are some helpful techniques available to give you guidance whether cardiomegaly is present or not. In the old days, we used to use intercostal spaces for looking at cardiac shadows. But because intercostal spaces width is very dependent on the respiratory phase, whether it's inspiratory, expiratory, and definitely in our very often dyspneic patients, this is a very unreliable method of measuring. These days, we will more commonly use a new system, the vertebral heart scoring system, described by Dr. James Buchanan, which will compare a part of the chest which is not moving, a vertebra, with the width and the length of the cardiac shadow. It is less subjective, but one has to be aware that there are a lot of breed differences and that for many breeds different VHS normal values have been described in the literature. The easiest way is just to use a piece of paper and hold it against the radiograph. We will start for the length of the cardiac shadow just where the trachea is dividing into the left and the right main stem bronchus and we start measuring under the beginning of the left main stem bronchus and we'll go to the apex of the heart. This is the length of the heart and we will do the same for the width which is the widest part of the heart very often lying under the caudal vena cava which will give you the widest part which is the width. We will then use the same piece of paper and lay it against the vertebra measuring from the fourth vertebra onwards. That means we need to have three rib pairs before that. So we measure, we lay that, this against it and we can measure up to one tenth of a vertebra how many spaces we have. So one, two, three, four, five, five and a half for the length and for the width, one, two, three, four. So a total of nine and a half vertebrae, which is within normal limits for this breed. When we are looking at uh, cardiac shadows, we don't only have to deal with cardiac enlargement, but occasionally we also will see hearts that appear too small. They can be really too small or it can be because of the lungs are hyperinflated. If the heart shadow is too small, like in these radiographs, we call it microcardia. More commonly, we have to deal with cardiac enlargement and this enlargement can be generalized. The whole cardiac shadow can be enlarged or it can be more localized with chamber, individual chamber enlargement, which we will discuss later on. Here you can see examples of real general enlargement where really the heart is enlarged. In a case here with very severe and advanced end-stage mitral valve endocardiosis and its associated eccentric hypertrophy. But be careful, in large peak dogs we have to deal sometimes with false cardiac enlargement, where the heart shadow is very enlarged, but it's not the heart shadow, it's a dog with pericardial effusion. And what we see is literally the heart shadow and not the cardiac uh, silhouette itself, but the silhouette of the pericardium filled with fluid. And this can mimic very easily severe dilated cardiomyopathy in the large breed dogs. On these thoracic radiographs, you can see the obvious left atrial enlargement, some degree of venous congestion, but no sign of pulmonary infiltrates. Left atrial enlargement can be secondary to mitral regurgitation. This can be seen with mitral valve degeneration, formerly called endocardiosis in dogs, but also with dilated cardiomyopathy where the mitral annulus is dilated by stretching 
of the whole valve apparatus. Very rarely it will be secondary to mitral valve endocarditis. The left atrium on the dorsal ventral radiograph here is not that visible. It lies between the bifurcation of the trachea in the two main stem bronchi, literally on the top of the heart. If there is severe atrial and auricular dilation, we can see a bulge in the two to three position, which isn't present here. You can here see such an example of more severe left atrial dilation with auricular dilation in the two and the three o'clock position. The left atrium itself, the chamber, is lying on top of the heart between the bifurcation of the main stem bronchi in the left and the right caudal bronchi and is not visible in itself in this radiograph. However, you can clearly see the left atrial dilation again on the lateral radiograph with here obvious compression of the main stem bronchi. Left ventricular enlargement, which we will be noticed on radiographs by a mild shift of the left apex towards the left on the dorsal ventral radiograph and a very prominent caudal border of the left ventricle on the lateral radiograph can be seen with as well eccentric as concentric hypertrophy of the ventricle. In large shocks with eccentric hypertrophy, we think of dilated cardiomyopathy in the first place. In small dogs, we more commonly think about mitral valve and the cardiosis of degenerative mitral valve disease, but then the left atrium will be dilated as well. If we think about concentric hypertrophy, then hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, a very rare condition in dogs, is a common reason to have such a type of cardiac shadow, but more commonly we see this with congenital heart disease like aortic stenosis. Right atrial enlargement is very hard to diagnose on a lateral radiogram because of superimposition of the ascending aorta. However, on the dorsal ventral radiograph, we can see the right atrium bulging out in the 10, 11 to 12 o'clock position. The right atrium will be enlarged if there is severe tricuspid insufficiency because of degenerative valve disease, but also in some other diseases as the right arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. Right ventricular enlargement can be secondary to eccentric hypertrophy or concentric hypertrophy. The right ventricle is visible on the lateral radiograph as the cranial heart shadow border. But be careful, when there is left ventricular enlargement, the heart can be twisted around and we can get false right ventricular enlargement. Therefore, it is always important to look as well at the dorsal ventral radiograph where we can see the enlargement of the right ventricle from the 6 to 11 o'clock position.